Welcome back to some new r slash malicious compliance stories, where people comply to the letter, but not the spirit of a request. I hope you had a great day. The first story is called Stupid Tax. Way back in the late 1900s, during some of my high school years, I worked at a location of the restaurant chain prophesized in Demolition Man to one day be the victor of the fast food wars, along with several other buddies from school. In those days, one could purchase a tackle, in hard or soft shell form, for 79 cents. It was the same then as it is now. Shell, meat, lettuce, cheese. If you wanted the supreme version, which added tomatoes and sour cream, it cost 99 cents. If you wanted to add sour cream to any menu item, it was a 25 cent upcharge. Many people would come in and order a taco with sour cream added. And generally, we would repeat it back as our taco supreme, no tomatoes. Knowing that ringing it up this way saved the person 5 cents. If anyone asked, we'd explain why we rung it up that way. And most folks were cool about it. But sometimes, and sadly more frequently than one would hope for, you'd have the jerks who just couldn't comprehend things like logic. That's not what I ordered. Nowadays, I believe they would be called Karens. Back then, we had other names for them. When we encountered those people, it wasn't worth my barely minimum rage time to try and explain things like economics or basic math to people way above my pay grade. So we'd just say, sorry about that, I'll correct it and ring it up exactly how they ordered, widely known as the stupid tax. The next story is called Karma Tip. This happened quite a few years ago, when I was a bartender in a corporate style cookie cutter restaurant. I mostly worked nights, but had one regular mid-shift on Fridays. We were always super busy at the bar for lunch on Fridays, and usually had quite a few of the more workers coming in to eat, and then head back to work. Nearly every Friday, the same smug, borderline rude lady came in for lunch. Every time she paid with exact change and zero tip, maybe half the time, she would complain over some minor inconvenience, and more than a few times got her comp meal. The more I had to rate on her, the more upset I got. Around Christmas time, I was out and about in the mall, buying for family and friends. Picked out something nice for my girlfriend at the time, a sheer top which I thought would look amazing on her, decently priced with it being on sale too. Rocking up to the cashier, I was a bit surprised to run into the smug from my job. In street clothes, I felt like she barely registered who I was. Or maybe she really didn't care who was at her register. Maybe both. So I hand her a $20 bill. She examines it for a moment, turned it over twice, held it up to the light even. Then out comes the counterfeit pen marker. I was thinking to myself, a bit excessive, no? Change should have been around a dollar and change. Surprisingly, she hands out $81 plus change. She calls next in line. So I step to the side for a moment, in contemplation. I could honestly feel the devil on one shoulder and angel on the other. It took me a moment or two, but I finally let my moral compass win and stepped back in front of the register. I nicely explained that there was a mistake made. But before I could continue, she shut me down and briskly told me in a semi-professional tone to get lost. So I did. The way I look at it, all those lost tips and the money she just gifted me was just karma. Sucks to be her, I guess. The third story is called Ladder Compliance. My grandmother has always been super fun and active. She played softball in an organized league until her late 60s. Broke her elbow in her 70s while going for a backhand on the tennis court and was always game for playing catch or throwing a frisbee around the yard when we were growing up. My grandfather, her husband, passed away about 30 years ago and he was really big into woodworking. Graham still has his woodworking shop fully set up in the basement of a house. A few years ago, Graham needed to have back surgery. Once this was done and she was back home, her kids set her down and specifically laid out a few safety rules, including one about no getting on ladders, because of the risk of re-injury in case of a fall. 
So climbing on a ladder to change the light bulbs in the hallway fixture. So using the pull down ladder into the attic to get the holiday decorations. So using the ladder outside to clean the gutters. Something she legit did up until that point. If you need help with these chores, one of the kids or grandkids can come do it. Fast forward to the end of that year and Graham is preparing her Christmas decorations. She's got an 8 foot tall artificial tree that she's had for several years. However, it's now too tall for her to reach the top of, without explicitly breaking the rule about ladders. As you may know, these types of trees typically come in three sections that you slide together to assemble. She could absolutely afford to just buy a new, shorter tree, but instead decided to take a different tag. Rustling a bit at the no ladder rule, Graham takes the bottom, heaviest and widest section of the Christmas tree, drags it down the steep steps to the basement and runs it through grandpa's old table saw to cut the pole and eliminate the bottom two rows of branches. Voila, a tree short enough to perfectly comply with the no ladders edict. My mom and aunts and uncles were speechless and everyone who was around just had to laugh and join in decorating the comically shortened tree. She still has it. And yes, it looks totally absurd. The last story is called Malicious Wishlist. One year, when the holiday season came and my family started exchanging wishlists for Christmas, my mother didn't have many ideas for what to ask for and didn't want to spend much time thinking about it. She eventually gave us all a very short list. I don't remember most of what was on it. I'm not sure whether she even asked for anything specific at all, or if the entire list was a few vague categories. But the number of specific things listed was fewer than the number of other people in our family who planned to give her something for Christmas. The one detail I remember about that list, aside from its shortness, is that the last entry was, literally, stuff and decided that this was essentially malicious compliance with the definition of a Christmas wishlist and deserved a little malicious compliance in response. I also got her a serious and genuine gift, but in addition to that, I googled for things that were named stuff and I found a certain magazine. Our family has a tradition of taking turns opening Christmas presents all together, one at a time, so the whole family can see and briefly focus on each and every present. When my mother was about to open the stuff issue, I told everyone to get their cameras ready, to take pictures of her reaction to it. She laughed and facepalmed for a while. She knew what it was about and took that in good humor. But she did gripe a bit about me telling everyone to get cameras ready. She gave the magazine array in a white elephant gift exchange a few days later. In the years following that, she sent longer and more specific wish lists. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please don't forget to leave a like, comment and subscribe. And if you have time, watch another one of my videos. And now, I hope you have a great day. See you soon. Bye bye.